Welcome back to another Acting Analysis Friday Meters, and today I'm going to take a look at Season 1 of the Hulu show, The Great. And The Great is indeed great. And the couple scenes I want to take a look at. The whole season is really good. And this could be a hour long dissection of all the awesome elements. So if you have Hulu, if you have access to that, I highly recommend you watch the show. Well, let's go straight into the ones that I wanted to show you. First up, we have this moment here when she is observing people. And the thing that struck me was just this moment. And of course, if you know this channel, if you watch my stuff, you know I like props. I like the idea, and it's kind of dark here, but she has a wig and he has something. She has something there and he has his wig, but they get entangled. And this moment happens here where it's like, oh, I got to get out, get out, which I like again because of things you can add, right? This could be a scarf. This could be something with Velcro. This could be glasses stuck into something. This could be like it is here with hair, but it all gives you again, opportunity for different kind of pantomime. And this could be something where they find it funny. I don't know why I'm drawing this here, <laughs> where they find it funny or it's something that makes it embarrassing or something that's stressful. But if you have a character with props or you want to add props to a costume or again with wigs and hair or even something that's outside, think about what you could do to add and emphasize, like add to a moment and emphasize a moment of, again, what, whatever you want to do, uh, awkwardness or embarrassment or whatever it is. Next up is this very weird moment where for a very prolonged amount of time here, he he scratches his ear. He's like, all right, this goes on for quite some time. And now watch what he does after that. He has that very short, <laughs> yeah, that very short smell. It's so weird. And it's tiny, like he stops talking, but it's just that little moment of, and then that's it. It's not super long and, and really he's going around with the finger and smelling it, but it's just enough where you go like, that's weird. He needs to smell the finger because he put that into his ear. So the reason I'm showing you this is because it's, it's nice and subtle. It's, I mean, it's not super, super subtle, but still it's nice. And it's something where it adds something to your character. Is your character rubbing the nose and smelling it, rubbing ears or doing something with the costume, something where the character did an action and a gesture and whatever it is, and then you can top it off with something like that. Just adds one more thing that makes your character weird, that makes your character interesting or funny. So think about that when you do have an action. This could be with lip sync and without lip sync. What the character is doing here, what could you add as a one more thing to really emphasize and push the caricature of that character? This just made me laugh because it's mostly just the body mechanics thing. As he walks towards the fountain, you can see how he gets on there and basically what happens after that. It's just a great fall. It made me laugh. But also what's really cool is that, you know, he could be straight on, but is not. I mean, I'm not sure what he's thinking as an actor there, but I like this from in terms of animation. It gives you a nice silhouette through here. You can even have the foot out here this way here. It gives you asymmetry with a nice lean. But what I like about the whole thing is that once he has this action falling down, you got the offset. It's very animation specific here. You got offset and you got this leg going in and then the other leg as well. But then at the end, as they're both up there, they both go out for one more change. So I just like the succession of like what body parts are moving and how, and the difference in posing. So it's not just a you know one axis rotation back, but there's more complexity in the legs. Again, this is purely mechanics and just visuals and posing, but it cracked me up and I thought that was a really good that little end thing of putting those legs out there. And again, if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of reactions and eye darts and looks and thought process and all of that. And she tells him they're going to stab his fat face nine times. And I love that look that he just did not expect this. Like, oh, wow, that that is fairly violent. And then he, someone else is talking off screen. But then he goes back to her like, what? Did you really say this? And again, I love this where maybe you you know, your lip sync is wrong character, even if this is your shot. You know, again, if you don't want to do a lot of lip sync and you have this where it's not off screen, but you can't really see the lip sync, right? You just do kind of some cheek stuff and some jaw stuff so that there is movement, but you concentrate on the reaction. Maybe that just is your shot. But imagine the shot runs longer and you have this reaction. You have that look, no blinks, he's completely shocked, but it continues on where he's really so shocked that he has to look back at her. Like, really? Did you just say this? And I love how far this is pushed. So again, this could be something where you do a two shot where you see this, so you can do lip sync and then finish it off with that reaction, or purely just listening to someone saying something. And again, this could be one character, this could be a second character off screen. But I think this is something that's slightly underused when someone does 
pantomime is usually like a body pantomime, someone doing something, but think about just a facial pantomime of someone listening and reacting. And you might argue this might be too subtle for a reel, there's really not much going on. Of course, you can embellish and emphasize and stylize even more, but I just like this idea of that prolonged look. And even imagine the focus will continue to be on her and more lip sync, whatever. Keep going with the character potentially, thinking about is that going to make it even more impactful that he looks away and then comes back to really emphasize, wow, I can't believe she said that. Next up is again a little gesture by a character where she tells him your dad would be proud up in the heavens. He goes, oh yeah, what a lovely thought. And then he looks up and then he has <laughs> that little wave. It's cute. It's just the character is a horrible character. And that just gives him a little bit of childish innocence maybe. I don't know. It's just a cute little moment of, hey, hello up there. So again, if you have your character say something or react something, could you add something that even if your character is established to be, you know, a good character, bad character, what could you do to maybe change that completely as like a 180 in terms of character or emphasize the character? But it's just a cute little thing that is, I mean, it's somewhat driven by the lip sync or by the audio where it says, hey, you know, oh, it's a lovely thought up there, hi. But it's just a cute little moment. I wouldn't say it's subtle. I mean, you clearly see it and animation wise, I would not cover the face as much, a little different things in animation. But just think about that. Could you do something through a look or a gesture to really push a character either to something unexpected or just to push an existing style and, and character portrayal? This one goes back to a reaction. So they are forcing this character to jump up and down and they're laughing at this and it cuts to him going, all right, yeah. And then over to him, yeah. And again, this is something where, not that you have to structure the shot like this, but this just reminds me of what if you do have, let's pretend, let's go to this frame, and something is happening here, right? Even if it's two characters, maybe they're slightly out of focus, who knows? But then you have character here, character here, and as they look, maybe they turn their heads and then they nod. Like, again, this might be a, maybe a funky setup for your shot. I just like the idea of an action that happens and it might even again change focus where it's in focus and then this is in focus, but characters that are reacting. And in this case, it's, it cuts to them. But to me, it's just something about extending the shot and extending the focus and the point of interest to something that's potentially more subtle. Again, when you have faces that potentially then turn to each other or something where it doesn't have to be just, well, this is the lip sync, this is the audio, I'm gonna concentrate just on that. Well, could you expand the shot and add something that's not in the audio and give your shot a bit more layers and give your characters more layers, just the whole performance, just a bit more complexity than just, this is the lip sync and that's what I'm doing and that's it. Speaking of reaction, there's this. I like this idea and especially this moment through here. So what if you start a shot? It could be this, right? It could be, a wider view where you show someone is mad, throwing things around, breaking, jumping up and down, or maybe that character, totally different setting, headphones and rocking out and listening to music and it's awesome. And that could be the first establishing shot and then it cuts to something like this, where then it's all about the reaction, but you can still have the character go through the frame and we understand what that is because you established it in this shot or whatever view you can have, maybe it's something, you know, like this. But it's cool that you have the continuous action and it's them reacting and also reacting differently. When you got two characters, you got to think about contrast. How do they react? Is someone a bit more playful with it? Is someone a bit more concerned? Something towards the end when he throws, you can see how she still has a bit of a smile. So totally different reactions, but it's something where you can push posing for contrast, you can push the facial features. And it's something where if you don't want to really animate a lot of body mechanics, you can just concentrate on them being still with a foreground element that goes by that's slightly out of focus to kind of reduce work and really focus on the pantomime and the reaction of characters. This was really neat too, where uh, all the characters here, they went through a terrible ordeal and he just had a speech that was not that successful. Like, uh, all right, I guess I gotta sit down. And she just, she just can bear this and she gets up to hold a really fantastic speech. And this is the moment here where looks, a little bit of a swallowing, the tension through there and just that slow getting up and you can see how she's potentially going, oh, I don't know if this is gonna be okay. And maybe she tries to be not too loud, just that look down. And of course his reaction here in that she finishes and starts her, her speech. But this is something where I want you to think about for a simple action, right? And that's a common assignment where someone sits down or stands up. That's a common, just a simple exercise. But think about 
well, what is the headspace of the character? Is the character kind of, all right, out of ideas, maybe slightly embarrassed or okay. And that's like maybe a faster, more rushed sit down with a couple darts processing. What did I just do wrong? Versus this is going to be potentially a problem if I speak up, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you got the tension, the nervousness, totally different headspace for, for different characters, how they, again, sit down or stand up. So for you, if you're going past just the mechanics, think about what you could add and think about what the character has experienced before, afterwards, where is the character and the character's action is going to influence someone here and what is that going to mean for this character and I could draw and draw and draw and draw. But I'm always a big fan of still, even little moments here with the tension and the shoulders and the look just to give it another layer to just the body mechanic. And this is actually after all of this she did really this moment is so good. Her acting is so good. This is such a good show. All the, the cast members are so good. But she's done. She's done with the speech. Huzzah. And then after this they have all the different types of clapping. So if you look at them as they get up, you have a that type of clapping. They're fairly similar here, but then you get a bit more reserved waiting. Then you get a bit more of a hesitant. All right, I guess. Then you got the really big ride. That was good. That was good. And slightly small also to the side. You look at the posing. And then the big contrast of him going, all right, I guess. So again, this goes for me into contrast with characters. So if you have multiple characters, so you have to think about their posture, even though for now in this frame, they're fairly similar, but whatever you can do, if they all clap, how can you make each clap different to give it a certain personality? And it will all fit the established characters throughout the scene. But as you animate something, it might be just a couple seconds long, Try to find something that really distinguishes the characters so we can understand, oh, this character is, a, you know, whatever, a villain or a hero, make it very broad. But this generally just comes back to what I always tell my students. Any movement matters, any timing matters, the way you blink, if you hold your blink for a couple of frames, how you clap, if it's a clap like this while looking away, if it's a clap looking forward, is a clap like a big one like this, if it's kind of like, Whatever, so all of that, even just like the way you would tilt your head and the way you clap, or some people have this very stiff clap like that or clap like this, like all of that gives your character just another layer and, and then it distinguishes them from other characters that you see in your frame. Speaking of distinguish, if you want your reel and your shots to distinguish themselves from other shots, I don't know, I'm trying to find segues. I have a workshop, so if you like this and you like that approach, you like that thought process about adding complexity and awesomeness to your shots, you can sign up for my workshop. We can work together, you can send me your stuff and I'll send you the review, link in the description and everywhere with examples. You can sign up at any time. Speaking of time, thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate the time that you put into watching my clips. And if you don't wanna miss anything that I upload, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss anything because I do upload every day except weekends. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next clip.